Right then. Well, it's it's a uh, it's about that time I think to talk oh, okay. about. Good old new TV show came out. Uh, people are like yeah. you lied. I did lie. I, I said we weren't going to talk about it on EFAP, but uh, we, we, we. The thing is, guys, yeah, I great. I did something cruel, and that cruelty was having both Rags and Fringy see that show. That's why I want to honestly kind of just listen to them talk about it for a little bit um because i am just hyper familiar with it at this point while they've only seen it the one time and recently so i'm just i'm just curious for them to uh have a little back and forth and discuss how they felt about it you know what you guys give me, um, give me your opinions why don't you just do some startups you know just say some things um, about what you thought fallout uh, so um, the television show let me, let me... by amazon tv so i will say this about the um I'll say this about the Fallout show, that I was actually surprised when I uh, had heard the things that I'd heard, and I kind of watched the show. Uh, I was surprised at how much worse it was than what I had been led to believe, because from the first episode, it was pretty awful, um, but I stuck through with it. Mahler forced me to watch it mm -hmm. against my will. Mm -hmm. um, and by the final episode, I was pretty convinced that the show was, it possessed virtually no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Oh boy. Now that's a I, potentially harsh take. You know, the, the world was, may, listen, not, may not be prepared for it. Well, um, get ready, I guess. But boy, what a, what a dog shit TV show. <gasps> um, what, what a terrible, terrible show. I legitimately don't know what people like about this. Um, as a fan of Fallout, I consider myself a pretty decent fan of Fallout. I didn't like it as an adaptation. I didn't like the way that they took the game and made a show of it. I think that, similar to the Halo show, they'd done a terrible job at making this world and putting it into a new, uh, and turning it into like a new piece of media and in a new medium. I hated basically all of the characters. Um, the plot was practically nonsensical with how things led to other things. Um, I don't know what it was. I, I, I just, I hated it. I legitimately did not enjoy watching the show. It's terrible. Um, I, I mean, maybe a couple scenes weren't terrible across what, like eight episodes. That might be the best praise it gets is that sometimes a scene wasn't terrible. Some of the acting was good, but. Well, I say some of almost all, all the good acting was almost exclusively uh, relegated to um, the Cooper character. Um, but yeah, I am legitimately baffled at how so many people are giving this uh, a big thumbs up or praising it because what an awful TV show. Absolutely terrible. Well, <laughs> Fringy, what about you? <laughs> um. So yeah, like I watched the first episode and I just I found it like pretty dull and it was, it was just lame. I didn't really want to watch it, um, but then I did. <laughs> um, uh, the takeaway would be that um, if you think about the way that the story is constructed in this show, how it plays out, how the characters get to where they need to go, uh, how the scenarios for each of the episodes are created and resolved, like this, this show is like laden with um pretty just like quintessentially bad writing um like a lot of insane coincidences massive logic stretches that turn out to be correct characters um like getting themselves into these really stupid situations but then being saved by like pure luck um just like throughout the whole story like the way that it's all connected together is completely absurd um good old like lots of just good old-fashioned plot holes as well um, and then in terms of, like, the amount of substance it has, well, it's, it's like, I mean, it's pretty thin, really. Like, I mean, for a show that's, like, eight episodes long, and for a lot of the episodes are an hour long, it's really thin. Like, in terms of, you know, what it has to say, or the arcs that the characters go on. Um, and so I guess, like, the takeaway would be, well, I mean, you know, like, the production values are pretty good. Um, I guess there's that, but like, really, I mean, if you were to like look at the actual nature of the writing for the characters and the plot, um, I mean, it's it's really similar to something like Halo of just being like nonsense, um, and yet, you know, the reaction has been 
massively different, um, much more positive towards this show when it's got a lot of the same kinds of writing problems. Um, I'm not really sure what to make of that. Um, I suppose it's a uh, yeah, like I, I just think it's like a pretty bad show. Um, if if it wasn't if it wasn't like Fallout, you know, if it was its own new original thing without all of the recognizable iconography uh, from the games, I'd be curious as like how much of a of a of an impression it would have made, um, how like how much interest it would have mustered on its own terms. Um, yeah, I, I just it's, it's yeah, it's, it's I don't like it. <laughs> I don't think it's yeah, very good. Um, I this is one of those shows where. Um, it tries to be bizarre to hear that people seem to think contrary to this, but the show is definitely trying to be serious. It's trying to talk about serious topics. It's trying to create drama around the characters. It's trying to create drama around the relationships. It's trying to create drama through the scenarios in which they find themselves. There is, it's obviously trying to be serious as a show. Um, and yet... The fact that it's goofy or silly or oh, the games are da 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 is used as a defense for every horrific yeah, I decision. I find it really strange made. when like so much of the show is obviously just plain dramatic moments. Um, you're like, yeah, they've got the goofy bits occasionally, but there's much more of like a. It, it, it's very much a case of there's a lot of obviously dramatic moments that are meant to be based on the character. You know how the the characters were written and and how the plot was constructed. Um, but the foundations are just like really, 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 really. I was gonna say rocky, but like they're they're pretty like much d completely broken for the most part. The way the story is connected together is insane. Well, um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, I've I've actually been <laughs> I've I've heard from people that it actually well it looks it looks so much like Fallout. It's really captured the the aesthetic of the games, and I think that very rarely it actually manages to do that. For the vast majority of this show, you're just in. You're, there, there's two places that you're in: desert and forest. Uh, and there's a few urban environments, but really it's just desert or forest. It's very. It feels very, very generic, post-apocalyptic. And then every once in a while, someone will pull out a Fallout thing, or someone will make maybe a Fallout reference. But as someone who's played three New Vegas, four, and seventy-six. Uh, some of these games quite extensively, I definitely didn't really get the feel that this was the Fallout world for the majority of the show. Um, I, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of an, because, like, I came into it, I'm not very familiar with Fallout, um, but, I mean, I will say, like, based, based on my understanding of it, is the idea is, like, one, two in New Vegas are the good ones, right? And then, like, three and four kind of, like, exist in a different category in terms of, like, how they're viewed. Kind of. Three's like, eh, four's like, eh, and 76 is like, eh. So, yeah, New Vegas is, like, the good one that I've played, and I've, I haven't played one and two, but I hear good things about them, despite their, you know, jank and, you know, the different kind of game. Well, you will know my opinion somewhat because of uh, other streams I've been on. I was pretty clear on Real BBC that I thought the first episode was garbage, uh, and then on Open Bar... I tried to defend the position that the entire season is uh, kind of a catastrophe in terms of structured writing, both for characters, plot, and I guess the rest somewhat. I feel like they tried at the tried their hand at several themes. They tried their hand at a uh, structured approach of three main characters that run three different plot lines that intersect, cross, and end up essentially in the same ending. And that on paper, when you throw in the, the music, the aesthetic, and the we're not taking this too seriously, but we also have moments that people will hopefully share and remember that are quite dramatic, it's like built to be consumed and more than likely easily, not necessarily forgotten, but added into your library of stuff you've seen, but you can't quite recall what happened in it. It was like the, it, they did the, they went uh, to, you know, and, and they. It was the head. It was the show. Yeah, she had to like take the head. They had to get the head. I remember that. And um, I remember they went to like places like Vault Four. Yeah, I remember that. That was a weird. That was crazy. That Vault Four. Um, I, I think the performances were good. And now I'm like that. That's both me as an opinion and both that person saying that because uh, the substance in the show is weak as fuck, and it um, completely dries up, shrinks to hell when you uh, look at the. 
before, during, and after in terms of what characters want, what they need, what they, where they're going, you know, and then every piece of information you're actually given if you're paying somewhat or full attention, either way. I don't think this uh, show survives any sense of scrutiny. And, you know, no, a lot of shows don't, um, but this one I thought was particularly bad. And then, of course, to hear it getting praised excessively to such high levels. I saw it several times, uh, said to be it is the best video game adaptation along with Arcane, and it's so cool that Ella Pinnell is a part of both of them. It's like, wow. This is on point it's with really cool Arcane she's, uh, now. <laughs> she's a part of Arcane, that's for sure, yeah. Um, yeah, she yes, did a good is, voice, of voice I mean, acting work. And, uh, yeah. it, it is just funny, right? Like, people are comparing it to Halo. It's like, yeah, they're pretty comparable, all right? Like, they have very similarly bad writing. Um, yeah, it's... I, I guess... I guess the Fallout show more consistently emulates the aesthetic of the at least the Bethesda Fallout games. Like I guess it's got that I going for it. I think so. Yeah, it does have um, that. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah, it, but it, it 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 does feel like a. I mean, wow! To put this on the same level of Arcane is like the ramblings yeah, of a madman. Um, it was a horse drawing with. Uh... Four parts good, one part bad. The one part oh, bad was the Halo show. That. And the other four were uh, Arcane, Cyberpunk, this, and I think The Last of Us. And they were like, this, uh, you know, the good adaptations versus the bad one. And then I saw a quote too being like, how the fuck is Arcane? Like, what, <laughs> like, what, what is it doing in there? Get it out. <laughs> it's not fair at all. Um, yeah, yeah I think I saw that meme too. Very, very disappointing to see that because, like, Fallout is as bad or arguably worse than halo um i i mean that would be a deep discussion to get into as to which one is worse but uh i, I i'm not happy to see this get praised because i do not want this thing to be encouraged mm -hmm. this is this is like horrifically bad writing um it just has it just doesn't have anything going for it it's it's awful through and through it was strange too because like all of uh, there's a couple of shields that come equipped for this one. The it's just like the game means it can get away with some crazy levels of plot armor, coincidences, and uh, like like uh, outright holes. Obviously, there are countless times characters either do not well get injured when they should, but they don't succumb to any kind of pain or death that they should. Which again, it's like oh, yeah, it's like the game. And then there are characters who do succumb to death or significant amounts of pain in, in scenarios where you'd imagine they shouldn't, considering other elements of what we've been shown. And then again, it'll be like, well, that's that's just, you know, it's realistic consequences of their injuries. And you're like, that doesn't feel, this feels a bit wrong. And then it'll be like, people will get shot, like, like one bullet straight to the head or, or uh, you know, enemy threats or whatever have you. And then in other scenarios, it'll be they'll fire like as many as a thousand. You guys are probably familiar with that particular thing. Yep. And uh, people will again say, oh, it's just like the games when in VATS, you know, you'll aim at someone and it'll be like 0% of hitting this target, even though they're like right in front of you. Isn't that crazy? It's just like the game. And it's like, man. I, I guess I, I don't know, like when, when John Halo whips out the assault rifle, like, yeah, man, that's like the game, yeah? Oh, mm. <laughs> oh man, look, there's an elite. That's pretty cool, right? It's like, I, th like I thought game. we all agreed. I thought we all agreed that like this was insufficient in terms of just uh, like it's like yeah okay we're definitely in the era where the adaptations are gonna for the most part look like the games and maybe even sound like it. I mean in this case right like just the fifties music getting thrown in all the time often it's just like the it's like yeah here's more fifties music yeah that's Fallout right yeah fifties music there you go. Yay. The game also relies on you knowing the context of certain things from the games because the show doesn't do a if you didn't if you weren't decently familiar with the games, I think you'd be very confused about the way that the story plays out, the state of the world and what a lot of things actually are. Um, you wouldn't well, yeah, be like if you didn't, if you didn't you watch the, caught up. if you didn't know anything about the games. Like what you'd be like, what? It, so what's the NCR? What is that? Like what's what's a what's, what's a that? pip? What's a pip boy? What's a I stim think, pack? Well, the best yeah, one because at least thing. those you're shown something like the Enclave. That's that's like significant yeah. in this plot line, but they give you no information on that at all. I suppose yeah, what's interesting the about this show as well, uh, and people in chat have already pointed it out, is um. You know, we're, obviously Halo's on our mind. Um, Halo is not canon, fortunately, 
um, as I understand it, this show is canon in the Fallout world. Like, it, it is in continuity, so, um, like... And that it has, and that it has massive implications on like New Vegas as well, right? To the point that people are even fighting over whether or not like it breaks continuity uh, in terms yeah. of the timeline. That which uh, the big controversy good. is whether or not it outright retcons it. But at this point, I think even Todd Howard has said it doesn't. It doesn't do that. It's set. Todd, it, New Vegas happens, and then this happens. It's fine. So um, right, it, it's which fine is almost it uh, doesn't matter, like we, what ending you choose that you know well, like, canonically. A years later it just it doesn't matter <laughs> as i've mentioned on other podcasts the fight rages on it's not necessarily a fight the three of us are uh as involved in because um yeah well what's funny is normally right every other time i'd be saying we're going to be judging this for what it is which is an adaptation i was just like no gotta cut myself off there because technically it's an adaptation in terms of mediums but as has been stated by the creators and the people involved in every way shape or form this is in continuity this will tell you about things that will happen in the games, and the games will tell you about things that happened in this. That's how it works. Which which p creates new variables for things to uh, get destroyed. Well, uh, for anybody uh... who's... Because we really <laughs> haven't done this before, so anybody who would be wondering what the rules are here, it's like, so the way we would judge it is no different than we often judge sequels. It has to respect what came before to benefit from what came before. There are things that in this show are... Uh, increased in understanding and value for example those factions we were just discussing if you're aware of the games and if they want to say yeah that's the thing that's this this is a continuation of that uh you know law or uh, storylines and stuff so if you want to know more you can and that's part of it and you're like, okay yeah, i could respect that but of course it means now you have all the baggage of those being respected this is the problem like the mcu had and star wars they want to make their own stories so they have to be like oh dragging around this big bag of things that happened but of course the the reason they do drag that bag around is to get us to keep coming back. They get to pull out little uh, prizes, little member berries. But, you know, the Fallout show has not stopped doing that either. It shakes up a whole bunch of things in front of your head, and they, they plan to shake plenty more as time comes on. But obviously, in this case, I'm just saying that um, there was a lot that they f up in terms of what comes from the games. And some of the f ups are just strange. In, like, like, it, the power armor is one of the first places I would go for just like that's none of oh, that yeah, is like, how that what, shit what, works. Wasn't it like some great writing how in episode two when the ghoul fought uh, Maximus, he fired like a million shots at him, uh, but then like and couldn't get through the power armor. But then at the end, he's like, yeah, you know, you can just like shoot this one part in the power armor and then you win. And that was really that was some great writing. Well, now just, that you like, said that. Forgot. Gonna have to bring up the defense like, that he had. Oh, the defense. He, he, he had, had armor-piercing armor rounds in yeah. the latter scene. Which, by the way, if if we were to, in an alternate timeline, say correct, therefore, it is no longer a hole. It is a hyper contrivance in favor of Maximus that he did not have that ammo in and Philly. Also, just however, like, well, why why did the ghoul shoot a billion shots then if none of them were going to pierce the that armor? Is, also a fair comment, but of course, bother. the killer argument is simply the bullet he presents that is armor-piercing, as people have called it, without any... There's no... I don't think there's any overt reference to him saying that's an armor-piercing bullet. But I'm fine with saying, fine, yeah, this, he, he has that in his bandolier in Philly, so he should have used that on Maximus, if that's how that works. Um, yeah, uh, basically what happened is he forgot that that was something that he could do, because Maximus is a main character. Yeah, you can't kill Maximus. End, it would ruin the story. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just one of those funny things of like, man, so did you like write the whole season at the same time, or did you write that part, and then you wrote the ending, and you forgot that that was something that you wrote in your story? And then just like, apply that sort of thing to many different scenarios in the show, of like, man, you're all here at the same time when there's no reason that you should even be crossing paths with each other based on the information that we have. Like, that's crazy, man, but like, god damn, it helps the plot move along, doesn't it? Oh, wonder, what? You got seriously injured, but then it just gets, like, fixed up five minutes later uh, by a character who has no reason to help you whatsoever? Yeah, that's, uh... Oh, man. Ooh. It's really important that we give you uh, this finger, even though in two minutes I'm gonna try and harvest your organs. Uh, there are, um... There are videos, by the way, because someone has mentioned it, and yeah, it's true. There's, there's videos reflecting the notion that these are video like when when stupid writing happens it's references to video games as in every stupid retarded decision maximus makes they're like he's the idiot savant of course he's chosen that pick that means that when he does stupid things he benefits from it 
Yeah, the the universe <laughs> and all the characters' will is bent to uh to facilitate his success. I mean, yeah, and you do get that impression. Failing upwards, he keeps failing upwards spectacularly. It's crazy. I, he's he's easily the most hateable character in the show. I think. From what um, I gathered, people who like it, the show hate him as well. I just don't. I don't know what they were trying to do with him. Uh, what are they like? They want me. They want me to be happy that he succeeds. They want me to not want him to die horribly all the time. I, I guess mean, somewhat of the I core mean, of it was they're... supposed to be a guy who felt powerless in his flashback that they showed us eight times to make sure we really understood. And that the Brotherhood of Steel offered him an avenue to get great power, right? Because as soon as he gets the power armor, he's like smiling all the time at like people having to do what he says and him having to, he, he can control the situation. He feels good about that. But then the more time he spends with Lucy, the more he realizes the truth of wearing that, that armor, that there's a, there's a philosophy behind it and that he needs to, you know, sort of it, it use, like, like to actually embody that instead of uh, benefiting himself. That's probably what they were going for. It up. I think they absolutely did. Yeah, because uh boy, I I just don't I don't feel any connection to anything in this world. I have I I hope the dog makes it out, I guess. Um, yeah, but yeah. like I just don't I don't care about anyone or anything. I, there's so little. And we haven't even talked about the whole we haven't really talked about it much, but I mean, we we've got like two plot lines going on, and then I guess the third with the pre uh, the pre apocalypse stuff. Mm. We have the the vault stuff. We have the finding the head stuff. We have the the pre war stuff. Um, I but but I'm just like measuring through it. I'm going through it in my head, and this is like fresh stuff in my memory. But I I don't have anything to latch onto. Everyone is stupid. Everything that happens is stupid. There is nothing that I care about. And if anything, one of the strengths of, I mean, we'll use New Vegas as our example, is that there were a variety of factions with a wide variety of characters that were interesting and had a neat perspectives and were ready to articulate those to the player that made me feel like this world was full of interesting people who were worth getting to know, who were... And it was satisfying to do things for them or get on their good side or to ally yourself with particular people or factions uh, to learn about why they feel the things that they do. And the the show doesn't even begin to do anything close to that. I'd say what the heart of Fallout is, is a post-apocalyptic survival game with a heavy emphasis on factions and characters. Um, but you just don't get that impression here. Um, every faction is stupid. Every character is stupid. You can't just tell me something without working to convince me that it's the case. Um, it's it's just a clown world, and I don't have any investment in anything. Well, <laughs> that's a that's certainly a POV. I would argue that uh, I wasn't in a good position to continue it after episode one, because like I said, I did not enjoy it, but uh, went in absolutely you know, neutral in terms of let's let's do this and see what it has to offer. I don't have um, a big stake in Fallout as an IP, nor in um, necessarily in like anything about the creation of this show. I, I hadn't heard a lot about it, but then I, you know, I'd heard people say it was pretty awesome and recommended it. I was like, all right, I'll check it out. And, um, I think one of the things that struck me big time was how much nothing's making sense in, in the vault in episode one. But a lot of people were saying, you know, there's so many secrets that will be uncovered, so many reveals, so much more context. You think there's only two vaults right now, or rather you've only seen two two vaults. There's like, you know, you don't, there's a whole third one. You haven't even explored the context of it. So, you know, you should maybe wait before judging it on that front. And I remember thinking at the time, and it's so interesting uh, to sort of look back on it. I was like, what could I possibly write to make episode one make sense? And I was thinking along the lines of the Raiders come in and there there was like, there's, a, there's something they need that prevents them from, maybe some gas got released in, in 32 and it made them all insane. And I was like, no, it doesn't account for when they first come in. And I was like, temporarily, they were gassed and it activated that night and they all lost their minds. 
And I was like, f*** me, the fact that I'm at the point of trying to explain, like, how this can make sense because they're all insanely retarded, like, in-universe. Like, this is not a good place to be. And of course I thought that that was kind of where the show was going to go in the finale. It was going to reveal that all of them maybe were mind-controlled or that they, uh, they weren't really people. Maybe they were synths or something, you know? Like, it was, and it was all a huge, crazy simulation experiment. None of it you know, was real, or none of it was meant to be anything in particular, it was all just, like, chaos. But then you find out it's so much worse when you get the full context of what happens in episode one, right? So, I mean, I was about to say spoilers, I, I assume anybody who hadn't picked it, we were kind of spoiling everything anyway, but... Uh, yeah, it's, you know, uh, the story's not worth... Yeah, it's just the story isn't worth it. The story's garbage nonsense. Uh, I, don't, I just spoil away. It's, um... Like you could argue the, the 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 core that sets all of this off in a way is is Moldavas needs two items of interest: the code to activate cold fusion, and the cold fusion uh, tech that is in a guy called Wilzig's neck. Or rather, well, that's how he's smuggling it. Anyway, I assume she was in contact with him somewhat. I don't know. Don't really need to know that. We just know that he was on his way to her, and he was going to be getting help to do so. And uh, she was going to collect Hank because she's aware of him from Vault Thirty One. Uh, sorry, 33, and, uh, you know, get the code from him. So, you know, you, you find out that she is a friend of Hank's wife, a uh, very good friend, to the point I think they were they were very, very close. She couldn't bring herself to kill a ghoul Rose, I, I, which I thought was bizarre. But sure, That's fine, strange. you know. Uh, she, she just loves her that much, right? So, yeah, and, and she's going to go and get to the vault. Like, I, I suppose I need to explain an extra bit of history. Hank caught his wife leaving the vault because their water was being siphoned, which I thought was a really interesting choice of words, siphoned, because what data do you have that would give that away, right? I assume it's that we should have X water and we don't have it. We have less than X water. I don't know how, what else you she would have as some information. Some kind of a leak? Yeah, that's the first the... thought I would have, is like some... a leak or an error. Um, but apparently the wife assumes that civilization has returned and that we need to leave the vault because their job in vaults 31, 32, and 33 was to direct civilization as uh, they are, they have, that's what they've learned to do their whole lives as a culture. They're, they're ready to lead the world into a better tomorrow. And so she suggests to, to Hank, you know, we got to get out there. And he says, no, that's crazy, which he has many reasonable arguments to, to, to push that forward. That is kind of crazy. It's like, we have no idea why the water supply is lower than it should be. And if we open that door, who knows what kind of damage we can inflict upon ourselves. He, he even says in the first episode that they're expected to reach safe radiation levels uh, in what, like a generation and a half or something? Or half a generation? It was something like that. And you know, that was back years ago that she was saying that. But anyway, she leaves and... Uh, she gets to Shady Sands. Uh, Hank chases her. He gets his kids. And again, spoilers, you really should leave if you don't want to be spoiled on this, I guess. Uh, he nukes Shady Sands uh, on his way out of it uh, as a sort of fuck you and a, an approach that is supported later in the episodes by uh, Vault Tech's investment in getting rid of everyone who isn't them, essentially. That, that, that's the simplest way to put it, but it's also the most complex. It's Kind of the the long and short of what they're they're up to, so he does that, and then we you know episode one is like catching back up to it. Well, Moldava survived all of that. She wasn't in Shady Sands when he nuked it, presumably, but she was very much invested in it as a project, and so she's it's like getting revenge while also uh, getting the code that she needs. But of course, the thing is, the questions start to raise like the, before we even get to Lucy. Is it is it really within Moldava's character to abuse, torture, and kill the members of Vault Thirty Three when they have no context for anything that's happened? They're all no less victims I mean, than many others, you know. I don't know why she would. Why would she bring? Yeah, that's like why would she bring the Raiders to do that? Why would she do all this stuff to them? Why does she feel this way to? the innocent people of the vault. If she hated the people of the vault, then how come she only killed some of them and got some of her raiders captured and then left, never to return again? I I legitimately have no clue what's it's, happening um, here. You, you do it by you degrees, learn, right? It gets. Yeah, that's baffling already, that that was even the decision, right? If you need Hank, if we were devising this plan, like you know, between the three of us, we're we're three invested, and we, we've we've we can ignore all the Vault Thirty Two stuff. I don't want to get into that right now because it gets so much more complicated. 
let's just skip to where we've entered, we're doing the fake wedding, and I'd be like, okay, as overseer of uh, 32, I'd be like, hey, Hank, uh, I, I need to tell you about something, something really important that um, I'd rather not discuss in front of other people. I take him into a room with you two in it, one of you has one of the Trank guns, boom, got him, tie him up, and uh, presumably this is a door. Maybe we take him to Vault 32 to talk to him, we just tell him it's something we need to show him in here that's super important. And so we got him, captured him, we'll take him out, and then uh, everyone else, I, I mean, we don't need to do anything to the Vaulters, there's no reason to attack them, so I guess we'd just say, hey everyone, we're, we're moving out, uh, they, don't, they, they don't need to understand what's happened here, we're just gonna, we're taking their overseer. Uh, no need to kill everyone is kind of what I'm getting at. But of course, the something f happened where they felt the need to not just kill, they, they, they brutally attack some people here. This is not like a strategic, practical thing. Or pragmatic thing, I should say. Um, but then of course you open up even more context. Uh, Lucy is the daughter of Rose, as is Norman. And both of them were here when this all happened. And Moldava is passionately invested in Rose, and those are her two kids. And they both nearly get killed, several times. Um, there's like no acknowledgement of this at all. You'd think Moldava would tell her people those two are off-limits. In fact, those two are not just off-limits. I want you to get them, bring them to me, and we're getting them out of here. We're, we're, you know, we're completing Rose's wish, so to speak. Yeah, but if it was written that way, then there wouldn't have been like a crazy opening episode where a whole bunch of, uh, you know, violence occurs and the main character is in danger. Like, that's the reason why it was written this way, was, oh, look, we'll, we'll, we'll surprise the audience with like a big, you know, crazy violence encounter of like, oh, look, this is the outside world encroaching on the vault and look at this craziness. Um, but then never mind whether or not the character who initiated all of this would ever have made these choices based on the way that she's presented in the finale. <laughs> uh, Mole David doesn't care about her children. Look at her actions. She only used them for emotional manipulation. Did you watch the show? Yeah. Uh, she was very invested in creating a community that fosters sort of care and power and freedom to the people, but simultaneously has a reputation of being pretty ruthless, which is a character that I am totally on board with and totally interested in. I'm not interested in a character that has completely inconsistent and almost dumbass approaches to almost everything. This was so incredibly retarded as approach and completely out of character that in retrospect, like, like I told you, I can't even devise a way to make episode one make sense. I don't know what context I could ever apply to it that would make me go, ah, there we go. It all slots in. Like I said, simulation, maybe. But I ain't getting much more of it out of that. I would have... Um... Well, then you add on top of that what she wants in terms of her goal at the end of the, the show, like to unlock uh, Cold Fusion. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's pretty antithetical to her goals to, like, have what's happening on screen, you know, play out right now. Like, yeah, well, the obvious thing a lot of people highlight... To her advantage to take both of them. Yeah, Instead of leaving her behind. Lucy is great leverage uh, to get Hank yeah. to give the code over. So, you know, if she truly didn't care about Lucy's life, which she definitely does, that's how she's characterized, but if she didn't, then she would absolutely use her as a pawn to, uh, uh, you know, get that code out of Hank, but she sacrifices that option. You know, a lot of people are confused by the whole, Hank, you've got to choose the people or your daughter, which would be an interesting choice in a lot of scenarios, but they ruin it here by having no consequences. I don't know what the f the point yeah, of that I was. Yeah, I mean, and you could have a, a character reason for her doing that, like Thanos did with uh, yeah. Star-Lord, but I just don't, that's just not what was happening. It was just a, it's just a setup for some weird potential drama but it isn't really it's actually pointless and it's it doesn't tell me anything about her at all that she would make that, that she would make that ultimatum to him no it's a it's a uh, classic uh characterized through like speech versus actions it's it's completely fucked up uh if you remember moldava has the um the sort of hero's ending bleeding out looking over a city that is now powered up thanks to her actions holding Rose's hand, saying we did it, you know, we achieved our goal, the people have the power, and now I can die knowing I did everything I could. Which is insane, because she was like a horrible monster in, in the show, and it's like the show doesn't even know. Uh, they tell us about her wonderful community, they tell us about her uh, humanitarian efforts, they show us the history of her goals to stop the evil Vault Tech from doing this, that, and the other. 
And it's like they don't even remember episode one um, and what happened there, to the point where Hank has to remind Lucy of it, but she doesn't even seem to recognize it. It's like this woman murdered so many beloved members of your friends and family. Oh, I call them family in the sense of like, you know, you would have been around them your whole life. Some of those people probably meant a lot to her. Um, though I wouldn't know, because the reactions aren't exactly uh, thorough and passionate. It's, um, it's baffling to consider it all, and super awkward, because they are pretty consistent in this show in terms of they want an aspect of a character to be what we believe about them, but they don't support it in what they do in the universe. Uh, a lot of who is good, who is bad, and who is somewhere in between. Most of the characters are reprehensible, I would say. I mean, this slots, uh, this slots in well to a lot of the, you know, Bethesda games and titles where they will say, oh, yes, this faction, they're the this, and they do this and that and the other thing. They're very smart, powerful, and da-da-da. But you never actually see that. Uh, it's never, you're, you're never convinced of it because it's just told to you um, without any, you know, backing up on it. Yeah. I mean, the Brotherhood of Steel in this um, show is like what a boneheaded stupid ridiculous organization <laughs> yes but they're portrayed as being you know powerful and honorable and well, um, stuff like that when it's just like it, that's that's nonsense i think uh fringy when you were uh what it was, it was either it was probably both of you to be honest with you um when we first meet titus and he's a complete like 110 percent asshole there's nothing about him that's interesting or fun he is an asshole now I'm sure you'd agree, that doesn't mean it can't work. We can make stories out of people who are like that, sure. But you get struck immediately by the sense of, oh man, you didn't want to go with, like, all your other options? Like an actual, yeah, I mean, you know, immediately comes to mind, what if, like, Titus was actually an alright guy and wanted yeah. to mentor Maximus instead of just, we meet him, he's a jerk, and then he dies. And then and it's like, all right, well, yeah, we're done with that. Moving on. Yeah, there's nothing stopping yeah, them from every... characterizing him in any other way. But no, he's like just a complete asshole and that's it. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, potential interesting things that they could have done that they never take to the point where you just have to roll your eyes and go, oh, they went with the most boring, like superficial, transparent thing they could have possibly done. Something, um, I was speaking to Capital Opinions about the show and he said that, uh, something that he doesn't like about the, what's so obvious about the writing in this that he, he felt was uh, personified best by Wilzig. That would be uh, Michael uh, Emerson's character, the, the guy with the head, basically, the guy who got his head chopped off. So they're like, there's an effort at the beginning to pretend he's a character. And then uh, there's a certain point where it switches over and he's no longer a character. He's just um, a plot he's a device. Quest item. Yeah. And he was like, and it's so annoying to watch a show written like this because there's no respect given to the work they're actually putting into it. They just need to complete goals. So like, they show us that he he's like the one guy at the Enclave who maybe has a moral backbone and he's trying to maybe move things in certain directions that uh, can help slowly and slow burn sabotage things that are happening there. Or at least direct them in better ways, right? Like saving the dog's life or having his own little hold to take care of an animal like is enough to already think about what, what else he may be doing. And it looks like what he wanted to do was get Cold Fusion out of the, or the key part to Cold Fusion out of the Enclave to, to give it to Moldava to provide, I, I guess, the area that they're in. I'm not sure how far it went. Um, electricity, uh, infinite power, whatever. I don't know if the, the Brotherhood of Steel, they're going to they're gonna take it from that area. I think that's what's implied at the end. In any case... You know, you, you got to, the thing with the dog, the, his position with the Enclave is, is desperation to get that, that key, so to speak, to Moldava. Once he enters Philly, because you even get that part with him coming to talk to Lucy, that is kind of, it's one of those scenes, there's, there's, as Rags was mentioning, there's about eight to ten scenes that I'm like, this is fine. It's nothing special, but it's fine. And mainly what about that scene I like? scenes? I don't think there are anything I would call like, because what we're quite like scenes in which there's no problems I have with it, those exist, but there's nothing that made me go like, oh wow, that was actually pretty yeah, nothing cool. elevates it. Yeah, yeah, um, like uh, some scenes threatened to one day get to being good, but they either got cut short or something incredibly stupid happened. And so, um, when he talks to it, like, he, try and picture being him, right? You 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 walk in the wasteland. It's at night. You know everything's very very dangerous. You see a fire. And you walk toward it to check out who's at the fire, and then you see a girl, and you're like, I'm gonna sit down and wait for her to wake up, and then explain to her that she shouldn't be doing this because it's dangerous. 
Like, wow, what a f idiot move. Uh, the first thought I would have had is that that's so absurd that no one does that, that, like, this could be a trap, right? Like, it's it's a practically set so that you're supposed to go try and grab her or something, and then a bunch of guys will come from around a corner and f*** you up. It, something like that. Yeah. Um, but even if, right? Even if it, he, he decided, no, absolutely no way this is a trap. No way, it's not a trap. It's just like, why are you risking anything to do that? You know, when you, when you tell her, oh, you've set a fire in the middle of night and that's going to attract people to potentially hurt you, it's like, you're sitting here, motherfucker, right now. How is it safe for you? It's like, no offense, uh, your dog is not going to be able to take on a lot of people uh, who come at people in the wasteland. Uh, they have a gun, you, you might just be f it, Yeah, I'm not saying that for any other reason than maybe that exactly happens. In any case, um, you know, he goes to Philly, and the second he meets her up again, that's like the cutoff point. He's no longer gets to be a character. He's shot in the leg. He's then, like, carried around, as you said, like a quest item, and then he just delivers a speech the sort of half-cocked, half-baked and confusing, and then kills himself before any clarifications can be made, and he's just out. And I don't think it matches yeah, him at just... all. Well, no, he would have a very big vested interest in telling this person, this this Lucy, um, you know, probably, like, why would you be cryptic about this? Well, it's for, we know it's for the sake of the audience not knowing, so we can get a reveal later, but he would want to say, listen... Here is all of the thing. This is all the stuff you need to know. This is where you need to go. It's at this place. Here are what the stakes are. Here, here's advice that I can give you for traveling around the wasteland. Here are some factions you don't want to, you know, you don't want to talk to or stay clear of. Don't go to these places. You would want to tell her everything that you can to help her odds of success in this mission that you deeply care about as well. But that wouldn't be as dramatic at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, of course, in, in Philly, you have uh, the ghoul is in the right place, right time, and so is Maximus in the right place at the right time. So is Lucy going to literally the first shop she visits is the right shop in the right place at the right time for all of them to bump directly into Wilzig. Crazy, that kind of uh, coincidence. But I'd be willing to forgive that if it was like the main one and it happened earlier on in the season. But these happen constantly. Uh, they are everywhere, and they are so f disappointing. Uh, the big one that got highlighted by a lot of people was, of course, just when Maximus is about to die by being eaten through, like, I guess, the the slots between his armor uh, by rad roaches, and just when Lucy is about to die from radiation poisoning. They both bump into each other, and they both provide the thing they both need to save each other's lives. It's just Even like... Though... She shouldn't have encountered him at all. Well, so was... it's kind of funny development because uh, on streams I've been on before, I've highlighted that as like a massive coincidence and most people agree. But then uh, it was only recently that I was thinking about it a bit more. Lucy has a tracker inside Wilzig's head, which means uh, she has a real time update of exactly where the head is, or at least a direction of where it is. And she was coming from the Super Duper Mart. And she would have been chasing Thaddeus, who at that point it was daytime, and he left at nighttime, so he would have been well in a different direction. And that means it's an outright hole. She should never have been able to save Maximus, and that means she should have died as well. Like, both of them should be dead. Which means, yeah, both of them should have died. Um, yep. It, the show, I'm not kidding, the show is filled with this. Constantly. It's just betrayals of everything they keep setting up and telling you is true, which is just odd, but you know... What's exactly to where they need to be at that moment, either to facilitate the drama that they want to have for that episode or to resolve the drama that they had set up that episode, just to get them exactly where they need to go. Like the, the cause and effect is just completely out the window. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's kind of covers a lot of the major, major well, there's, there's plenty of major things left, but I don't necessarily want to spend forever talking about it. I just, uh, I was immensely disappointed and um, kind of baffled just that this is a show that's getting elevated so hard when it's doing... I mean, because I was about to make a joke. I was like, it's it's got no less problems than something like Captain Marvel. And it's like, well, it's written by the, the woman who wrote Captain Marvel as well. So, like, mm. we shouldn't be expecting some kind of dramatically different approach, necessarily. I mean, you know, there's involvement from Jonathan Nolan. There's a couple of other people who are in, like, showrunners that are directly involved, but... There is, like, like if you check out, you know, interviews, the influence, the, the extent to which uh, she had an investment in this project is pretty large. And so I suppose she's building up uh, a catalog. 
but that if you told me, you know, do you want to watch another story from the person who wrote Captain Marvel, I'd be like, not really. If I have a choice of, you know, several writers, that's definitely not one I would go with, but it doesn't surprise me at all that that is the person who wrote this. It's filled with the exact same approach to trying to reach payoffs that aren't even ne uh, necessarily worthwhile. I find, like, just think about where everyone ends up, you know? Like, the ghoul, he's woken up, and thanks to the uh, background sort of information we get on Cooper, we find out eventually that it seems, you know, a whole season, and what we can say definitively is it seems he wants to find out where either his daughter or his wife or both of them are. And uh, apparently there's going to be vault tech people he assumes higher-ups that will likely know that. But that, like, he's mostly chaotic throughout the whole season. I don't know that he didn't have that to work with, even when Lucy gave away her surname was McLean, because that's still, you know... 200 years later, right? It's like that. It, it could be it could be anything. Plenty of people with that surname in theory. Um, but, you know, coming to the end being like, where the f*** my family? It's just like, yeah, okay, I guess that's that's where we're at, we're at with him after eight episodes. Um, Lucy is more of a, you know, to, to again, simplify it a bit because we can't spend forever with this. She, she, she's losing her humanity somewhat, all right? She, she, it's eroding her golden rule. She's becoming more punished. She's realizing the harshness of the wasteland. It's a very normal um, style of, like, an arc, which I think has immense problems, but I just don't want to go into it right now. And then um, we've got uh, Maximus, whose arc is, like, becoming more and more noble, uh, trying to find something to fight for that is more... edged toward more peaceful, or at least more right than, than where he started. And, uh... It's kind of crazy when you look at how each of the three of them end up in these places. I've seen the complaint about the ghoul being that he's mostly chaotically, like, bouncing around the plot until right at the end we sort of try to crystallize him into I'm searching for my family. Which I imagine now that they've established that, that's going to be like a full-time thing. But um, Lucy's, she goes back and forth a lot on uh, what she is now deciding to do based on the experiences she's had. Uh, and then Maximus, he kind of... I guess you'd argue the main thing is he's fallen in love with Lucy is why he's uh, motivated to, to, to be a better man. I, 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 that's probably what they, they would... Maybe. I assume... Even though he, she had to still be the one to prod him to do the obviously not horrifically evil things. Yeah, I think that... And even then he did it with hesitation. That Vault 4 shit was insane. I don't know how else to describe uh, it. Yeah, like... that, that's... That stuff's wild. I don't know how anyone thinks that could be anything other than the most just trash tier nonsense I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just need like someone to explain it to me. Like, what? How is this not horrifically bad? Well, uh, that's kind of where I'm sort of slowly heading. Is that there's so many components to it, but the it all falls apart under what I would call a basic level of scrutiny. And I don't even mean that, like, there's no reason to apply scrutiny all the time for anybody, but obviously our job is to sort of break down stories, so I am applying yeah. a lot of scrutiny. I want to know how this story matches up. I want to go back and look at how it starts versus how it ends and what we're supposed to have known about where characters were and what they were doing. And um, I don't know how much of their scripts were, I was going to say redraft, but I, I don't know how much of this was made before it was starting to be made, if, if that makes sense. What I guess I'm getting at is a lot of these things can be explained in terms of like early contradictions to later things by them making it as they're going. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised about that. But again, I wouldn't want to rule out that this was all written ahead of time and that it just isn't um, super Good. well thought out. No. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, I mean, that, that, that kind of covers what I think broadly, you know. <laughs> Anything else you guys w want to mm. say? Uh, not really. I <laughs> No, not particularly. Yeah, honestly, I... There is just an element of... I just... There's nothing... There's just, like, nothing good here. Um, a, a couple actors are good. A couple scenes are not terrible. Is some of the imagery is intermittently okay, um, but the problem is, yeah, the, the trash tier characters and the horrific writing. So you know, like, what's the what's the I, point I guess I'm, way, I'm you know? like more fascinated by what I guess it represents in terms of the nature of video game adaptations right now. I've said this so many times. This gets, <laughs> I feel like a very much a broken record, but. We're in the era where the adaptations are going to at least look 
like the games and probably sound like them too. But the question of whether or not they actually like capture the substance of the thing that they're adapting is still the one that's up in the air. Um, I suppose I'm just interested in this case because it's like, yeah, I mean, the production values are really good, but like, damn, those scripts. <laughs> that's that's a bad takeaway. It's just like, yeah, it's just, it's just the nature of the writing. It's it's just riddled with like these crazy like contrivances, plot holes, logic stretches, um, and 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 it's just like really thin. So I I just yeah, I don't really <laughs> yeah d- didn't enjoy it. Yeah, there's nothing to latch on to. There's nothing for me to go. Oh, I care about this or I like that. There's none of that. Um, so going forwards, I just, I just don't want to watch anymore. If there's a second season, which there probably will be, I guess, you know, yeah, far worse seasons. Get... Season there's a sentiment and it's already been expressed in chat a couple of times. It's just like, you just, you just, you gotta, you just gotta hate everything. It's like, you can't so willfully ignore all of the praise we've been giving to recent entries into TV shows or movies. It's getting weird. Like... You, you, it doesn't work, I guess is what I'm saying. You can't, say for example, oh, yeah, I like I, a thing I, and Fringy doesn't. I can't go, Fringy, you hate everything, so now that you acknowledge that, now you must like the thing I like. It's like, that. that's never gonna work. Ever. It's a really bad strategy, okay? <laughs> and it w- wouldn't work the other way, either. If Fringy came home and said, I fucking loved Fallout, and I go, oh, Fringy, you fucking love everything. That's not gonna make him go, oh, you're right, I hate it now. It's like, that, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything. So just just stop. Like it's it's a useless strategy. Not gonna help anyone out. If you want to watch us praise stuff, tune into stuff like the Haunting of Venice episode of EFAB, or Walking with Monsters, or uh, I mean a lot of the multimedia medleys actually, or the multiple film review ones. I believe we praised Tetris, and uh, we obviously loved sixty five. Right. Well, Which... hey, you know, like if you want to see some positive coverage of video game adaptation, we did three episodes on Arcane, and we yeah. have an EFAP TV for the Last of Us adaptation, guys. So, yeah, you know, that's right. And uh, you right. know, the underlying sentiment is there's a lack of honesty in favor of getting engagement. I don't know that I understand that, considering there's a lot of engagement for positive coverage of this show. Um. People, mm-hmm. people love to love this show right now, and I don't blame them. It's fun to be a part of a big sort of, you know, uh, a, a movement, Especially somewhat if you're a, a community Fallout of fans yeah, yeah, yeah. The, starved for good there content. Are plenty of different Fallout communities that are very happily saying, like, this is this is awesome. We've got now another big budget form of medium that's going to be boosting and increasing and. Uh, somewhat selling the story of Fallout. We get more in this will, we get more of that. And so, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine that, that everyone feels that way, but, like, I I just didn't see it. And I've been... I've seen the show more than most people, I think, in terms of amounts of times. It's it's probably oh, bordering on unhealthy. Um, that'll make sense one day. It's 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 just the kind of thing that's... Um, y- if you're worried about us not being honest with you, I can't think of any motivation that all of me... Rags and Fringy would have to to take the show down, and um, why would we be super negative for this, but super positive for like The Last of Us? Yeah, I don't you know, think that makes sense. The, that was like another that. good example. Like we had every reason to hate The Last of Us show. We yeah, didn't. but the show ended up being really good. I'm so, not going to say we had I every mean, reason to as, as it is. I'm not going to say we had every reason to love Fallout, but we didn't have any big reasons to love or hate it. We we was just like, here we go. It's a TV show adaptation of a game. game. Let's hope it's good. I mean, we. I want all these shows to be good. I yeah. want there to be more good content. I want to, you know, eyes to get on this stuff. But, and I don't want to sit through a terrible show that I hate watching. I mean, if if I can go back to where every episode of Arcane or House of the Dragon or whatever, I was like super invested and excited to see what happens next. Um, I mean, we went through Silo in a couple sessions. That's another one. So, Silo is a really cool uh, you know, show that I fully recommend. Actually, yeah. Silo is the show to watch because. It'll give you some Fallout juice. A little bit of it, anyway. It will give you a bit of Fallout juice, yeah. But it actually has good characters, good writing, and really good world building. And really good intrigue, I think. Um, yeah, I think it does give you quite good intrigue, for which we still have uh, more intrigue to be uh, you know, explored. 
Hello, you just listened to a segment of the podcast Every Frame of Pause, or EFAP, hosted by YouTubers Mauler, Rags, and Fringy, and joined by a cycling variety of guests across the internet. They critically analyze media with exhaustive detail while pausing at every single frame. Subscribe to the EFAP channel and catch new episodes on Saturdays, as well as catch their smaller videos reacting to the latest and not-so-greatest movies and TV shows throughout the week. You can also subscribe here to EFAP highlights for the latest shorts, clips, and supercuts also up uploaded throughout the week. Links to all the relevant channels can be found in the description section below, as well as links to their communities on Reddit and Discord. Thanks for watching.